Please stand by. We're experiencing difficulty getting the audio for our Mississippi LSU football game. The powerful Rebels of Old Miss and the Tigers from LSU, one of the country's greatest defensive teams. And the teams take the field. Mississippi versus LSU. From Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the Tigers of LSU facing Archie Manning, who was a contender for the Heisman Trophy as the outstanding college football player of the year before he suffered a bone break, and that pretty much sidelined him and put him out of contention. He's back tonight to face LSU, their tough defense. The Rebels and the Tigers now on the field. This broadcast is brought to you by the 1971 Chevrolet by Firestone, the mileage specialist. And by the Polaroid Corporation, makers of the Polaroid land camera. NCAA football, and a big one tonight down in Dixie. Also by Sunoco, bringing you action of the world's highest octane gasoline. We'll try to get to the broadcast booth at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge as soon as possible. This is Bill Owen in the announce booth in New York City. And uh, like you, I have a monitor in front of me. We'll try to keep you apprised of the action on the field down below you. Mississippi LSU, and this has been quite a season for college football. Of course, it was just one week ago that Southern California put up a titanic struggle against Notre Dame and ruined the Fighting Irish bid for an unbeaten season. So the Irish going into that game, who were the favorites, have still uh, not had a perfect season now since way back in 1949. And it's been the Trojans who have been basically responsible for Notre Dame not coming up with that perfect record. The Trojans and Irish, of course, seem to uh, take turn about in destroying each other's records. We'll do uh, the best we can at bringing you the play-by-play play up until the time when the audio difficulties have been taken care of. It's Mississippi and LSU. Last week, of course, it was uh, the antics of Jimmy Jones who spelled doom for Notre Dame. Joe Theismann, you may recall, got the Irish off to a start breaking loose for a 25-yard gallop early in the action, putting Notre Dame in front 7 to nothing. But Southern California came charging back, moved in front by uh, a margin of 38 to 14 at one point. We're back at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. As you can see, a good crowd on hand for this titanic struggle down in Dixie. Let's try to catch the lineups now. This is the Rebels of Mississippi, Preston Carpenter, number 83. That's number 79, Elmer Allen, interior lineman on offense for Mississippi. Guard for the Rebels, John Aldridge. 
Here's Dennis Coleman, number 48. I believe we have cleared up the audio problem, so we can go back to the stadium now for the conclusion of the lineups. Left half back number 39, Ray Heidel. Right half back number 32, Rick Neely. Safety, number 30, defensive captain, Danny Hooker. Quarterback, number 18, offensive captain, Archie Manning. And the acting head coach, Frank Bruiser Canard. And now for the Fighting Tigers of LSU. That's put on number 34, Gerald Kegley. And left tackle, number 77, Glenn Alexander. Left guard, number 60, Jimmy Elkins. At center, number 50, Jack Gilbert. Right guard, number 62, Mike Damari. Right tackle, number 76, Mike Wright. Tight end, number 81, Jay Michelson. Tailback, number 24, Arthur Cantrell. Fullback, number 43, Jim Banglis. Splitback, number 80, Andy Hamilton. At quarterback, number 18, offensive team captain, Buddy Lee. The defensive captain, left tackle, number 73, John Sage. And the head coach, LSU, Charles McClendon. And here's the way the SEC standings are right now. LSU has an opportunity tonight by winning to be 5-0, and and Mississippi, of course, by winning could mean that they would be 5-1, and and they would tie LSU for the championship. Not since 1958 has LSU won an undisputed Southeastern Conference crowd. We've just had a correction on this, and we'd like to set it up straight here. Now, there will be an outright champion tonight. If LSU wins, they do win it. If, if Ole Miss wins, they win it. Because percentage-wise, this thing doesn't quite work out. So just to set everyone straight, there will be an outright champion tonight. So here's the toss out in the center. Okay, we'll go into that a little bit later because we have Scoop Hudgens from the SEC office with us in the booth. Number 18, Buddy Lee, 73, Johnny Sage of LSU, talking with Archie Manning and Danny Hooker, the co-captains of Mississippi, meeting with referee James Hartley and the other officials. The umpire, Cliff Norville, he's had unusual duties here tonight to okay the protective device on the arm of Archie Manning. And here is the coin flip. Won by LSU. So Buddy Lee and John Sage elect to receive the football. That draws a great roar from the LSU fans. Ole Miss will kick off. Will defend the goal line to our left at the north. So the offensive team will be on the field for the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Rest tonight in the gold pants, the white jerseys, the purple numerals, and Ole Miss in their cardinal red and their gray pants, navy blue is their other color, but they're wearing the gray pants with the Blue and red side stripes, the blue helmets. Ole Miss will kick off with Cole Armstrong, number 45, getting ready to do the booting. And now here come the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Not since 1964 have they beaten Ole Miss. They beat them 11 to 10. Last year it was 26-23 and a real thriller. The year before that, 27 to 24, and they tied in 1967. Well, here we are with 67,000 people awaiting the opening pickoff. And Archie Manning will be poised and ready as soon as Ole Miss gets the football. Jimmy Ledoux on the far side getting re ready to receive. Number 37 on the, in the middle is Casanova. There's Archie Manning on the far side of the field with that big protective device on his left arm. And Al Coffey is on the near side. So it means that... Cole Armstrong, number 45 of Ole Miss, will be getting this game underway. Here's the boot. Comes to Al Coffey. Up to Casanova. And Casanova is dropped on the 23-yard line. First and 10 for the Fighting Tigers of LSU. They've got Kegley, Alexander, Elkins, Jobert, Damari, Wright, Michelson up front. 
In the backfield, Buddy Lee at quarterback, number 18, Arthur Cantrell, number 24, as the tailback. Number 43, Jim Bengals, the fullback, and Andy Hamilton is the splitback, number 80. First and 10. First play of the ball game from scrimmage. And off goes to Arthur Cantrell. Hit hard by Dennis Coleman, number 48. A loss on the play of about two yards. And so Ole Miss is fired up defensively, too, John. Now you'll see the, an awful lot of this type of an offense, and also you'll you'll hear something today called the walking eye, and we want to point it out to you when we can, but we'll talk more about their offense later. Only one man back. Second down, 12. Buddy Lee back to throw. Fires to the sideline. It is out of bounds. Bill Van Devener covering. Kegley was the intended receiver, and it'll be a third down situation. And about 11 and a half yards to go. The first sequence from scrimmage before a sellout, jam-packed, and slightly berserk audience here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, on a perfect night. Temperature about 70 degrees. LSU will have normally the two backs, the two running backs. They might even put a tight end right behind the quarterback. But now in a passing situation, you see the, the uh, slot formation. Third down. Buddy Lee on the draw, gives it. Ball is fumbled, a loose ball is covered. Mississippi has the ball at the 21-yard line. And now for the first time in the ball game, and for the first time in a month, number 18, Archie Manning will trot onto the field. And what a roar goes up from the Ole Miss side. John Aldrich covered the fumble for Ole Miss on that handoff, but Cantrell bobbled, and here it is, first and 10 for Mississippi. Ball on the 21-yard line. Archie Manning, the quarterback. He's got Reed, Knight, and Stuttered in the backfield. Manning. Throws down the center. It is tipped. Incomplete. Intended for Stuttered, number 81. And it looked like the Archie of old. All right, here's the replay. They said that don't worry about how he's going to operate today, whether or not he'll be just a little bit funny in there or just a bit aware of things. They said it all week long. He has been practicing. There you saw he took a pretty good lick, but he's up and in the huddle again, and we'll be describing that uh, sleeve that he's got later. First minute has gone by. No score. Second down and 10. Mississippi on the LSU 21. Manning fires complete to pool, and he goes to the 10-yard line. Just inside the 10, and he's upset by Tommy Casanova, number 37. And that will be enough for the first down. 13 and a half, 14 yards on the play. First and goal to go for Mississippi. Seldom has there been as much tension back in the ball game since 1894 when these two teams started playing as there is tonight. First and goal to go on the line. Manning looks in the end, though he's got the man short, that was Randy Reed. He had a man deep through to the short man, and he couldn't hold it. Reed is the fullback. Not on the end of many receptions, but John, earlier, you had made the comment that you thought that Manning might go to the short men. Well, and he's had a favorite in Reed. He's got four touchdowns with the pass, and uh, he likes to hit his halfbacks rolling out because if he needs the maximum passer protection, then those men will block for him. If he feels he's getting it, then he'll release him short as he did there. Stuttered is out on the left side. And he keeps, goes, he's got cool. It's a touchdown. Jim Poole, a 6'5 junior from Oxford, Mississippi, a hometown product, has made his second touchdown of the year, and Archie Manning fired it in there for his 14th of the season. Any question about his accuracy was certainly dispelled at that point. Poole will try for the extra point. He's made 21 out of 22. It's up and it's good. And 13.25 to go in the first quarter. Ole Miss takes the lead. Time out here at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana.
Now, a new stunted town and country winter tire you can put on all four wheels of your car to really improve your stopping ability on ice. With just two new Firestone town and country stunted tires on the rear, you still stop. And you've stopped a lot quicker than with just two ordinary stunted winter tires on the rear. Firestone's new asymmetrical town and country tire with 112 safety studs, available where laws permit, gives us more reasons than ever to say, you go through ice, mud, or snow, or we pay the toll. If anybody tells you that ordinary snow tires are as good as Firestone's new asymmetrical town and countries, Tell him he's all wet. Look for the new asymmetrical town and country winter tire from Firestone, the mileage specialist. Troll Armstrong will kick off for Ole Miss as the Rebels lead LSU, one of their arch rivals in football history. 7 0 is the score. And it only took the Rebels four plays to move in with Manning passing to Poole. Casanova on the six. Comes to the 20. Down he goes in the 23-yard line. So it's first and 10 for LSU. No question about the fact that the LSU fumble really hurt when Cantrell bobbled the ball and Aldrich recovered. There you saw a little razzle-dazzle on the kickoff. It has a tendency to slow everything down, but if they go for the fakes, it uh, works well, but it didn't fool too many people there. Buddy Lee, the quarterback of the Fighting Tigers, hands to Cantrell. He runs hard and he's hit hard. 27-yard line by Allen and Aldridge. Second down, about six. The Tigers find themselves seven points behind here in the first two minutes of play. Now that's what Charlie McClendon calls the walking eye. The tight end lines up behind the quarterback and then moves out to either side. Andy Hamilton out wide to the right. And as you see, the back split. Lee looks over the middle. He's got his man. It's Rick Kegley. Kegley goes down to the 35-yard line. Goes to the 28-yard line. And finally rustled to the ground. Rick Neely finally got him. On the 29-yard line, and look at these Tiger fans, 51 yards on the play. Kegley's only a sophomore. That's Nicholson getting in position on the right side. Buddy Lee manages to get it to Cantrell. Goes to the 21 and is ridden out of bounds by Elmer Allen. 12 minutes, 13 seconds to go in the first quarter. Ole Miss has already scored, but look at the Fighting Tigers. They're down on the 21-yard line. That was the reverse option play. In other words, he goes to the right, makes a full spin, and then plays off of the uh, right side of the defense. It's a very difficult thing for a quarterback to do, but as you saw, Buddy Lee did it well. There you see the replay just a little bit behind him, but it's a real tough play. Second down and two, the ball on the 21-yard line. And off to Cantrell. 15-yard line. It's a first down for LSU, and Cole Armstrong brought him down. First and 10 for LSU. Off to the right goes Gerald Kegley, number 34, at the top of your screen. At the power eye in the backfield this time. Fumble, loose ball, fallen on by Mississippi. On the 18-yard line, Buddy Lee bobbled the handoff, it looked like, and Dennis Coleman, number 48, I think, got the ball. Here we see it again. See, he pulled out just a little bit early, or at least maybe the center was just a little bit late. It was hard to tell because he didn't have the ball as he was pulling out. Now, that's the second break going against them, so they're going to have to recover on defense. Two fumbles by LSU have given Mississippi the ball. On one, Ole Miss scores. Now they've got it on their own 18-yard line. And Archie Manning is having trouble with the uh, count because of the tremendous roar in his ears. 
And so time here is called momentarily. The Southeastern Conference notes with pride Louisiana State's mighty defense. The Tigers have allowed only one touchdown by rushing in 10 games this season. And just as impressively, five of its 11 defensive starters averaged better than a B in the classroom last semester. First and 10. And because of uh, a miscount, apparently he couldn't hear it, flags go down. This is what's so important about uh, being able to hear the uh, count. Uh, and they make so much noise down here that someone commented uh, earlier this week that this uh, cheering section down here is responsible for at least one touchdown a game. Well, they call it Death Valley, but some people have changed that around to Death Valley. 11-17 <laughs> to go, first quarter. Ole Miss out in front, 7 to nothing. Franks is out wide to the left. Piku goes over to cover defensively, and Knight goes in motion. Manning fires, it's tipped, it's incomplete. Almost caught. Number 45, Mike Anderson almost caught the ball. All right, that's one of those tough passes that uh, no passer enjoys. Uh, you know, he's looking for a man to break open. He sees it, and suddenly he throws it when he sees the man breaking over. Somebody raises an arm, and then it goes up for grabs. No one likes that as a passer. Second and 15, the ball is on the 12-yard line. Manning. Turns and throws deep. He's got a man out there. It's stuttered, but it's intercepted by Craig Burns, and he comes back to the 30. To the 40. Still on his feet at the 42-yard line for LSU. Manning threw that ball a good 50 yards in the air, John. Well, they were commenting earlier that perhaps if Manning does play today, that maybe he will uh, throw the ball short because he doesn't want to get a real good lick on his arm. But now there looks to me like a uh, penalty down on the field. Uh, here's the replay. You see Manning going out now, and if there's any doubt that he can throw the ball far, this ought to dispel any thoughts there. And the penalty was uh, a 15-yarder against LSU. Burt Jones was hit by Dennis Coleman and apparently ruled that he had actually started the motion of his arm. No fumble, so it's an incompleted pass, making it second down and 10 on the 44-yard line. So the interception, the subsequent 15-yard penalty, has given the Tigers the ball on Mississippi's 44-yard line, and they're trailing 7-0. 10 minutes, 50 seconds to go, and Burt Jones, the sophomore from Ruston, Louisiana, in there in place of Buddy Lee at quarterback. Fires it in the middle. He's got it. Can he keep his feet? No. He's down to the 18-yard line, and it's Jimmy Ledoux, number one. A sophomore from Sulphur, Louisiana. Knee touched on the 20. What an explosively exciting offensive game this has turned into. Well, Buddy Lee made it look easy, but I'll guarantee you that's a very difficult pass to complete because this guy goes down about two yards and cuts at a 45-degree angle at full speed. Bert, uh, pardon me, that was Burt Jones, number seven, that threw that. Excellent job. First down on the 20-yard line. Jones hugged by number 79, Elmer Allen, the defensive left tackle. Incidentally, he's a Louisiana boy from Delhi, Louisiana, playing against his home staters. No gain on the play. Mike Damari going in for John McCann at guard for LSU. Number three there is Al Coffey, who goes out to the right, and Ledoux goes in the slot on the right side. Second down. On the 20 of Mississippi. Jones rifles one. Touchdown! Jimmy Ledoux on a down-and-in pattern. Cut across. The Mississippi defender couldn't stay with him. It's 20 yards, and it's now 7-6. to six. 
All right, here's the replay. Watching go down, make that little fake to the outside. There it goes. Now he comes full head of steam, and watch how this pass comes right in there, chest high. Makes it look simple. Five for point will be by Mark Lumpkin. It's good. And we have a tie ball game with nine minutes and 43 seconds to go in the first quarter. Here on the banks of the Mississippi in Baton Rouge, the capital of Louisiana. ABC and the NCAA combined to bring you all the thrills of college football. And with time out, the score is 7 to 7. We return now to our studios for this message. You know what's in here? It's a picture of Marley, Dustin, and me and Scrooge. That's right. And now we wait for the beep. Good looking ghost? Yep. This countdown land camera from Polaroid does all the work and calls you when your picture is finished. What do you say, Scrooge? Can we call this camera the spirit of Christmas present? I'm Molly's ghost. Scrooge went to the bathroom. People are really together on New Kent Menthol. Guys told me about them. They were right. Kent got it all together. Kent has got it all together. New Kent Menthol 100s. Brisk, breezy flavor. Exclusive Micronite filter. Good, rich taste. They're all together now. All the refreshment of menthol. All the good things of a Kent. It's all together. And now LSU has tied this football game up. 7-7. Seven to seven. And Mark Lumpkin kicks the ball short. Picked up by a Mississippi player on the 25, and he comes back to the 36-yard line. It was Gerald Havard who brought it back. And now, Ole Miss, with the score tied 7-7, goes to work on its own 35-yard line. Defensively, LSU has Davis, Sage, Este, and Milliken, the front four. Anderson, Cassio, and Piku are the next three. Great drop back pass by Manning to the sidelines. That is Manning is Frank, and it's out of bounds about at the 45-yard line. Lloyd Frank, senior from Biloxi, Mississippi. Nearly a first down. Not a yard short of it. John, I think in reflection, LSU fans have been very pleased with their defense, but they said they really didn't have that explosive offense certainly hasn't been true so far. No, and they've averaged uh, three touchdowns a game, so it hasn't been that bad. Second down and one for Ole Miss. Cannon slips the ball to Bob Knight. Tailback, and he gets his first down. And it is right on the midfield line. You'll notice on the handoff of Manning's there, he's got to be extremely careful when he hands it off to that side because there's a tendency with only his finger sticking out of that, let's call it cast for the time being, he's almost got to put the second hand on in order to not have a fumble. Stuttered out to the right. Big rush. Manning fires to the sideline. Franks can't hold it. Nine minutes, three seconds to go. We're very sorry that the audio portion of our telecast did not get uh, to some of our stations in the east. But I guess that's just one of those things that you have to contend with the gremlins once in a while. But we understand we both have uh, picture and audio now. Coordinated, and it's 7-7. Still in the first. Archie Manning, the quarterback for Ole Miss. Broke his arm on November the 7th. This is his first action since that Houston game. Incomplete again to France. I don't know whether they uh, are working on that side intentionally, John. There must be some strategy there. Well, not, none of them I'm able to uh, detect up here, Bill, but perhaps there is. Perhaps they thought maybe they would have a weakness on one part of the field or the other. But as far as his throwing ability to either side, uh, left or right, doesn't make any difference to him. I was talking to Coach McLendon, and I said, how good is Archie Manning? He says, you name the greatest, and he'll be better. 7-7 seven seven is the score. It's third down. Third and 10 at midfield for Ole Miss. Manning throws. Complete to Poole. Down to the 35-yard line. And it's 
A first down for the Rebels in LSU territory at the 35. We pause now five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. First and ten on the 35-yard line of LSU. Mississippi in the red, LSU in the white. Big rush goes on. Manning throws with him hanging on him. Almost intercepted. Franks was the intended receiver, and John Nagel almost got there. Well, very nimble, as you saw, Bill, but it was a very dangerous type throw because he was throwing off of the wrong foot and trying to evade the rushers, and in doing so, he wasn't able to put any uh, any mustard on the throw, and those are extremely dangerous, particularly into the sideline. Never has an LSU team been able to beat Mississippi while Archie Manning has been there. And it's all tied right now. Second and ten. Manning throws another floater. This one out of bounds. Intended for Jim Poole. So the ball will go back to the 35-yard line. Well, wounded or not, Bill, you just can't throw the ball when you have somebody chasing him like he was on that play. He was real lucky to get it off, and I'm sure he did so uh, just so he wouldn't have to take it, uh, a big penalty by being dropped back there. Incidentally, that uh, four-deep backfield has accounted for 19 interceptions, 20 so far, including the one tonight. Casanova, Norsworthy, Burns, and Nagel for LSU. Third and ten. Manning. Gets time and fires. It is incomplete. Knocked away from the intended receiver, Bob Knight, the tailback, and to bring up a fourth down situation. For those of you that love records, uh, Manning just uh, established a new record in the Southeastern Conference with his three or four completions that he has now. That breaks the all-time completion record, and now he's got it with 394. And there you see they're third in the nation in scoring defense, 7.9 points per game. And uh, boy, Price, that is really great. Bryce defense. Hinton is in the lineup to try a field goal here. From the 42, it'll be a 52-yard attempt by Hinton. It's a fake. He dropped the ball, actually, and he had to scramble with it. And so Kenny Blunt did the only thing he could do is fall on the ball at the 45-yard line. And now LSU gets a good break with good field position. Well, there you have the second turnover now for Ole Miss. And, of course, this matches LSU, too. And as a result of that interception, they went down to score. As a result of a fumble, Ole Miss scores. So now let's see what LSU can do offensively. 7-7, seven to seven, 8.06 to go, first quarter. Nicholson comes to this side. And up goes to Cantrell. The left half back, he gets almost to midfield, and Bill Van Devener brings him down. Down through the years, the series has been very, very close. LSU holds an edge, 29 victories. Mississippi has won 26 in three games have wound up its ties. This is game number 59 in the long series tonight. Second down, about five. Buddy Lee back in at quarterback, pitches it back to Cantrell. And he stopped at the line of scrimmage and thrown pretty close to being out of bounds by Fred Brister, leading tackler on the squad for Mississippi along with Wick Neely. As we have said so often on an option play, the key is no, don't lose any ground into the backfield. In other words, stay parallel to the line of scrimmage or gain ground toward the line of scrimmage if possible. In that way, the end then has to come in after you, and he then has to throw the ball or keep it. Lauderhose coming in for Coleman at right end defensively for Ole Miss. Cantrell goes up on the wing, only one back. Buddy Lee finds some room across midfield. Goes into Rebel territory, and he's down on the 40-yard line. Hit by Crawl Armstrong and Jeff Horn. That'll be a first down for the Fighting Tigers. Keisha joined us a little bit late. LSU fumbled in its first sequence. The ball was recovered by Aldridge, the defensive right tackle of Ole Miss, and four plays later, a touchdown was scored by Ole Miss. Then LSU came back to tie it up on a pass also, and it's that way right now. Here's Cantrell. It's a good thing he was hit when he was hit. 
because he had some room ahead of him. And who is the man who was down? Whomever it is made one great defensive play. Looked like Cole Armstrong, number 45. He's the left linebacker. That's who it is. He gets up just a little bit groggy. And time here has been called at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where the score, Mississippi 7, LSU 7. Hi. I'm here to tell you that Chevy's back. Yes, more and more Chevrolets are being built and delivered to your Chevrolet dealer every day. And we'd like to thank all of you who've waited for your 71 Chevrolet. Thanks for your patience. And thank you for your confidence in Chevrolet products. It means a lot to all of us who work for Chevrolet. We know you'll be glad you waited. And here's one reason. Our new Caprice. It brings you the looks and luxury of a six or $7,000 car at a price that's strictly Chevrolet. Here's another reason you'll be glad you waited. Our new Vega, the little car that does everything well. We'll be telling you all about these and the rest of our new Chevrolets for 71 in other commercial messages. But right now, all of us at Chevrolet would simply like to say once again, thanks for waiting for us. It's second down, the ball on the 39-yard line of Ole Miss, the Fighting Tigers of LSU, with the score tied, 7-7, seven seven, half of the ball. And incidentally, congratulations go to Texas, the Longhorns winning the Southwest Conference Championship today in that big victory over Arkansas, a game you saw earlier here on ABC. And we're here to decide the Southeastern Conference Championship. Here's Buddy Lee, rifling it to the sideline. He's got Kegley, and he's out of bounds on the 31-yard line. Run out by Wick Neely, defending for Ole Miss. Just short of the first down by Buddy Orr. Well, I think it's apropos to say hello to somebody up there at Ole Miss, uh, Johnny Vaught, who isn't here today, and he's watching the game at home. And uh, John, 7-7, seven to seven, number 45 there is uh, Armstrong being attended to along the sideline. Third and one, Buddy Lee, the quarterback. For LSU, gives the ball to Cantrell, gets the yard, and then another two. Hard-running junior tailback from La Rose, Louisiana. Leading ground gainer on the team. Picks up the first down. In first downs, LSU five. Ole Miss has two. On the 29-yard line. Five minutes, 50 seconds to go. First quarter. Andy Hamilton is way out on the right side for the Tigers. Cantrell tripped up at about the 26-yard line. Preston Carpenter making the stop. He's been the workhorse all year. He's been averaging over 22 carries a game, and he's the guy that'll do uh, practically all of it. Their fullbacks in this offense do, don't carry the ball much at all. Second down. The ball is on the 26-yard line. Seven to go for LSU. Up on the right side is Jay Michelson. Complete to Andy Hamilton, and he's out of bounds inside the 20. Ray Heidel knocking him out of bounds. Andy Hamilton split back, number 80. All right, here you see it. He lines up at the split. Just that little quick shot, boy, and if the timing's right, that's very difficult. And the crowd reacted to what they thought perhaps may have been piling on along the sideline. So it's a first and ten for the Fighting Tigers at LSU on the 19-yard line of Ole Miss. Another fumble, Cantrell has it covered by Mississippi. Ball is covered by, I believe, Preston Carpenter, but we'll check on it. That's the third fumble tonight by LSU. That's what makes the coaching staff uh, look at each other and say, well, this is something that we can't coach all week to hold on to the football, but that's the breaks of the game, and now you're going to have to go on defense and see if you can knuckle down and react to uh, Mississippi's offense. First and 10 for Ole Miss. In motion is Bob Knight. Manning looks close tonight. 
Cut down at the 24-yard line by Bill Norsworthy, number 15 of LSU. All right, let's take a look at it. He tried to hit his inside man, cutting down and in, but the linebacker picked him up. Notice him looking downfield. Now he looks over here to the sideline. He picked up his secondary receiver, the sign of a great quarterback that can do this. Gain of a couple on the play. I think the interesting thing about that replay was to see really how much use Manning has of his left hand on the football. Set it in motion. Manning goes back all the way back to the 14. Throws a little pass ahead of him. Randy Reed gets up to the 41 yard line. Dropped by Ronnie Este of LSU. There's part of the big crowd. Now here's a good shot. Watch Manning move around. See, he's got the ball in one hand now. Perhaps uh, that cast does bother him from holding it in two. Now he gets a pretty good shot from the inside. But it's one of the uh, simple, uh, uh, it's called a half screen because the men really didn't get over there fast enough, but it's an excellent completion for good yardage. And Randy Reed, who caught the ball, limped off on the play. So he has been replaced in the backfield. And here is Manny. First time he's had to run it tonight. After that 16-yard pickup, he gains a yard on the ground. Jimmy Porter has replaced Randy Reed at fullback. Three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. The score tied seven to seven, and it is second and ten for Ole Miss in Rebel territory at the 40. Out wide to the right comes Vern Stuttered, the wingback. Manning trapped, thrown down at the 32 by Buddy Milliken, number 86 for the Fighting Tigers, and number 78 was Ronnie Este. We've talked about that protective sleeve an awful lot, but I'm sure that the Ole Miss fans, every time that they see him running the ball or getting tackled, can't help but just cringe a little bit. Because as you said, Bill, less than a month ago, a broken arm, and this isn't something that, uh, you know, just can heal overnight. Well, they have a very special way of treating those nowadays, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. That's what Manning has done so far, and add to that, that he scored one touchdown by passing. It is incomplete, intended for Jim Poole, number 89, and I thought for a moment it might have been deflected into the arms of Tommy Casanova. So it brings up a fourth down for Ole Miss. Back on the 32-yard line, and Bill Young, number 85, has gone in the lineup to do the punting. So with two minutes and 26 seconds to go, Young is back. He's averaging 35 yards a kick. Craig Burns... Back in the single safety. A driving kick taken by Burns, and he bowls back to the 25. Good coverage by Ole Miss. He spun around and dropped on the 25-yard line where the Fighting Tigers of LSU will take over. Give credit to Bob Knight on the coverage. And here in the lineup goes Burt Jones, number seven, the quarterback for LSU, first and 10 on the 25-yard line. You've noticed that Charlie McClendon has been alternating Buddy Lee, who started with Burt Jones, and it was Jones who passed to Ledoux for the touchdown. Jim Benglis, fullback, gets a couple before he's upset by Fred Brister of Ole Miss. Second down, and about eight. 7-7 seven seven is the score. We're still in the first quarter with a minute and 50 seconds to go. Out to the right side goes number one, Ledoux, Jimmy Ledoux, a little 5'8 sophomore. Burt Jones, passage complete to Al Coffey, completed at the 35. Let's see where they allow the progress because that was the point to gain. Up to the 36 and a half. You blocking linemen should have watched that play closely because there you saw perseverance. The man was getting by. Now here we're going to take a uh, look at it now. Now watch how this man from the left almost gets him, but there he throws it and just sends the man behind the, uh, the passer, and that's enough for a completion. Well, 
Handoff goes to Chris Stanton, hard running tailback. And he gets a couple. Jeff Ford and John Aldrich bring him down. Closer to about a yard. I think it's significant, John, that both sides, particularly LSU, have tremendous uh, hard driving in their running. It may have accounted for Cantrell's two fumbles. He runs the dog on hard. And when he is hit, the impact is tremendous. Back to pass is Jones. Incomplete. Intended for Al Coffey. Rick Neely covering on the play for the Rebels. Brings up a third down. No explanation on that, Bill. The crowd's reaction indicated that they felt that the pass interference should have been called, but keep in mind, this is Tiger Stadium. So third and 10, a big play here. Third and closer to about nine, really. In the center, it's intercepted by Jeff Horn. Mississippi is down to the 20. Down to the 15, inside the 10. Jeff Horn, a senior from Vicksburg, Mississippi, stepped right in front of that rifle shot thrown by Burt Jones, intended for Jimmy Ledoux, and now Ole Miss has the ball in the nine. All right, here we see it again. Jones goes back. He's got excellent passer protection, as you see. Now, he really rifles that ball, and Horn came out of no place, as you saw. He cut in front of it. It looked like the pass was just a little bit misdirected. But it let Horn come down, and he knows what to do with it after he gets it. 24 seconds to go. First quarter, the ball of the nine. First and goal to go. On the left is Floyd Franks, number 87. On the right is Jim Poole, number 89. And Vern Studdard is at the bottom of your screen, and here is Archie Manning. He looks in the center, is going to run, slips and falls to the ground on the four-yard line. Oh, you could see the determination that Archie had there. He really wanted the goal line. All right, here we have a look at Manning. He had a pretty good hole going up there. He located the hole all right, but now as he makes this cut, he finds the, uh, the sod a uh, little bit weak in that spot. And so that's the end of the first quarter and the score here. Ole Miss 7, LSU 7. Roasting pans used to be a big cleanup problem. But today, roasting pans come with Teflon. So easy to clean, even the messiest mess doesn't stick. Teflon. So you can use the time after a great meal for something other than cleanup. We're going to drive home a point about anti-leak Xerox antifreeze. It stops most common radiator leaks just like that. We guarantee it will stop and prevent leaks in your car radiator for a full year or just write DuPont and get your money back. Anti-leak Xerox antifreeze is guaranteed not to run out on you. The Rebels of Ole Miss have the ball on the LSU four-yard line with a score tied, seven and seven. And out they come with a second down and goal to go. Scuttered out to the right. Manning. Goes incomplete. Intended it for Bob Knight, who was the slot back. So it brings up a third down. In the last two games, two years ago and last year, Manning has been responsible for seven touchdown passes, four by running three by passing and of course the one tonight that evened it up now four rushing and four passing so Mr. Manning and Ole Miss can drive LSU nuts and as I mentioned earlier LSU has never beaten Archie Manning They've lost two three-point games Manning keeps stumbles down he goes on the four-yard line just a little bit of trouble keeping his feet so that brings up the fourth question is, will the Rebs go for the three? I believe so. Jim Poole 
is back. And Blunt will hold on the 12, 22-yard attempt. It's up on its way, and it is good. And Ole Miss has retaken the lead from LSU with 14 minutes and 13 seconds to go in the first half. This is NCAA college football. And with timeout, the score. Ole Miss 10, LSU 7. You know, in this kind of weather, I've learned to depend on dry Sunoco. Dry Sunoco? Dry Sunoco gasoline. Makes a big difference. This winter, fill up with dry Sunoco gasoline. All winter long, your car starts... like it's summertime. How's the car today, nurse? You cured it, doctor. <laughs> Fill up with dry Sunoco gasoline and get the bonus of 260 action. The action of the highest octane gasoline at any station. Blended into every gallon from regular on up. Only Sunoco has 260 action. And every gallon is dry. Cole Armstrong getting ready to kick off for Ole Miss after that 21-yard field goal by Jim Poole. And it's a high kick coming down to Tommy Casanova at the 5 for LSU. Back to the 10. Straight ahead to the 26-yard line, and he's dropped at that point. So LSU on the attack now. The defense of Ole Miss coming in. All right, there you see the statistics there. 8-4 to four LSU. Running plays about even, offensive plays. And look at the difference there in uh, yards passing. Buddy Lee hands off to Jim Bengals, the fullback. Stopped by John Aldrich, defensive tackle. You now it's a funny thing about it, but Jim Poole has scored all the points for Ole Miss tonight. He got the first pass from Manning. He kicked the extra point and just kicked the field goal. So the junior from hometown Oxford, Mississippi, is doing pretty well. That was his 30 year of the field goal, Bill. Three out of five. Second and six. Chris Denton gallops up to the 35 yard line. Be very close to a first down. Mr. and Heidel brought him down. About a foot and a half short of a first down. Third down now for the Fighting Tigers who are trailing Ole Miss. 10 to 7. 13 minutes, 10 seconds to go in the first half. Denton just barely gets that foot and a half. Coleman, Aldridge, and Allen making the stop defensively. Maybe close enough for a measurement here. Any part of the football has to be over. <laughs> Ole Miss has a great cheering section here, and some of them start pretty young. Chains come in. First down. First down for LSU on their own. 35 and a half yard line, trailing Ole Miss 10 to 7. Buddy Lee back to pass. It was, oh, it was caught by Denton, and he was hit so hard that it bobbled out. And I believe they're going to allow the completion at the 47-yard line. I can't recall anybody being hit head-on any harder than Danny Hooker hit Denton. Well, oh boy, I'll tell you, that was a collision that we are way up high here, and we could really hear that one. He laid it in there just beautifully, but I'll tell you, that was some hit. 
Well, Dent must come out, take a brief rest, I believe. First and ten, and Cantrell gets it inside the 40 to the 44 yard line. John Aldrich making the stop. In case you joined us late, Archie Manning has played all the way at quarterback for Mississippi tonight. He broke his arm a month ago, and now they're taking a look at Danton, Chris Danton, sophomore from Baton Rouge, who was shaken up after that hard hit following the reception. Second down. Buddy Lee, thrown to the ground by Dennis Coleman, number 48, the defensive right end from Aberdeen, Mississippi. A key defensive play by the Rebels at this point at the 46-yard line because it brings up a third down and makes it a fat 10. That kind of a defensive play makes a no option out of an option play. Wow, he came in there hard. Four for five completions by Buddy Lee. The one that doesn't show there is the touchdown pass thrown by Burt Jones to Ledoux. Lee goes deep. He's got his man. It's Andy Hamilton. He's on the wall out there. It's a touchdown. We were looking downfield. One of the players had dropped the towel. We thought for a moment it was a flag, but it's okay. It's All right, here he is. Spread out at his end position. There you saw the break, and he got behind the man. The biggest crime you can pull when you're playing pass defense, as all of you know. And he got behind him, and now this uh, has uh, turned around again. And Mark Lupkin in the try for the point with LSU out in front, 13 to 10. Lions to hold. And Lupkin makes it good. College football, what better way to spend an autumn evening with timeout. The score now, LSU 14, Ole Miss 10. Last match, well, you did it. How does it feel, that? Oh, Bill, great. Because every one of our guys are great. Mom, my dad, thank you. Great, 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 great. And the press was great, and our fans are the greatest. Les, you got champagne all over you. How do you feel? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Too much of a good thing? Ooh, Alka-Seltzer. Alka-Seltzer can help relieve both an upset stomach and yeah. a headache and make the day happy again. You're not at all like a man. So why should you shave like a man? With blades of steel that can nick and cut. This is the feminine way to shave, the Lady Sunbeam Shaver. It has a special contour shape, a built-in light, and no blades of steel against your soft, pretty skin. The Lady Sunbeam Shaver. A beautiful gift idea. If you think girls should shave like girls. Well, we still have 11 minutes to go in the first half, and here's the kick by Mark Lumpkin. Bob Knight chasing it. Goes out of bounds. Did he touch it? Well, if he did before it went out, it'll be their ball there. Otherwise, they'll have to kick it over with a five-yard penalty. Nope. Went out of bounds. A 46-yard pass from Buddy Lee to Andy Hamilton. Here it is. Let's see if he touched it. Obviously, he didn't because the official's looking right. Oh, he avoided it. So back the ball goes to the 35-yard line. And Stuttered and Knight still are the two deep men. LSU leading Mississippi 14 to 10. Wobbly kick, scribs off the right side of his foot, goes out of bounds. That'll be another five. Or what do you think, John? You know, every once in a while, you wonder why a great place kicker like he is can't meet the ball, but I think there's that little tendency to want to hit it just a little bit too hard, and then your timing goes haywire. But this time, I'll bet you that that <laughs> chin of his is right down to the chest. Well, you, of course, what they're saying here is you can have the ball here if you want it, uh, or we can move him back another five yards. been a lot of spectacular plays in this game so far 
All three touchdowns have resulted from passes. I thought maybe they might decide to take that ball. After all, it's on the 39-yard line. That's not a bad game. If he happens to catch a good one, it might be hard to get it back to that point, especially with the LSU defense being as quick as it is on the coverage. Shug Chumbler is going in at quarterback for Ole Miss. Chumbler, first appearance in the ball game, hands off to Randy Reed. I don't know whether that means that uh, Archie was shaken up or whether acting coach Bruiser Kennard has decided to give Shumbler a chance. He's a junior from Center Point, Alabama, and has been playing, of course, during this past month in the absence of Manning. He may want to look at the defense on whether or not the defense changed with this new quarterback in. Good point. Second and eight. Ball on the 41 and a half yard line. Ole Miss trailing by four. And Shumbler throws one deep, but much too far. And a marker goes down at the 24-yard line. Franks was the intended receiver. Nagel was covering. And it might be offensive interference because it looked for a moment as if Franks had gotten his hands out in front of him. Well, he ran up his back. There was no doubt about it, and they both went down. But that's offensive interference. So now let's see, uh, let's see it unfold again. This is a long throw. See there, he's running right up the back of the uh, defensive man. Offensive interference. So it's a loss of down. That's the signal for loss of down. The hands behind the head. And it goes back to the 27-yard line. Makes it. Third down. They must go to the 49-yard line. Wow. Just as he came forward, he was hit hard by John Wood, number 79. It goes as an incompleted pass. But if he hadn't started that motion, it would be a different story here. It's fourth down now. Fourth and 23. Oh, for the life of a quarterback when you get hit from the blind side. Oh. All right, let's take a good look at it and see if you can feel this one. See, he's practically untouched as he comes barging in there. Bill Young really lays it to him now. But did you notice how the hand came forward? Here is the boot. Casanova reverses the ball to Burns, but it doesn't fool Bob Knight, who makes the stop at the 34, 33 yard line. And LSU will take over at that point, leading Mississippi 14 to 10. Burt Jones is going in at quarterback for Buddy Lee. Pretty nice to have two quarterbacks who can throw the ball like these two. Ten minutes to go. First half, 14 to 10, LSU. Over Ole Miss. Alan Shorey, who is playing at fullback, knocked down by Preston Carpenter. Been kind of a big passing game so far. LSU 177 and Mississippi 65. I'm sure that everyone with Manning healthy has expected that to be switched around. Second and ten. Burt Jones has Danton, Ledoux, and Shorey in the backfield. Jones getting the rush, fights his way out to the 34-yard line, which is just the line of scrimmage, and Elmer Allen knocks him down. Like that was going to be a mighty long one. And only one man was out on that play, and he was down this right sideline. It was number uh, three, Al Coffey. But he had two men on him, and uh, you had no choice there. He just had to eat the ball or attempt to get a gain out of it. Third and nine. Coffey and Ledoux are out on the same side with Ledoux in the slot. First down. Pumps short, now can't find, gets the relief man on the left side. It's Ken Kavanaugh, and he is down at the 47-yard line. And there is a familiar name to LSU football followers. It was Kenny Kavanaugh, who was an All-American here back in 1939. And this is his son, Ken Kavanaugh, Jr., who just picked up 19 yards in the first down on the Mississippi 47-yard line. Coffee to the left. 
Ledoux to the right. Benton slams into the line. Well, I don't know how anybody could come back and hit that hard again after being hit so hard earlier, but Danton's back in there, rugged little guy as he is. Makes it second down about nine. Eight minutes, 13 seconds to go in the first half. These fans have been waiting for this game for an entire year, and they have certainly have not been disappointed so far. Benton on the reverse is hit at the line of scrimmage by Elmer Allen, number 79, and Jeff Horn, number 44. This was a uh, wingback reverse going inside the tackle, but it didn't pull anybody on the right side of uh, Ole Miss. Seven and a half minutes to go, first half. Third down and nine for LSU. And Jones looks downfield. The ball is deflected in the air. It is incomplete. Elmer Allen, number 79, who's playing a great game defensively for Ole Miss, I believe was the man who batted that ball high in the air. Brings up a fourth down. So Wayne Dickinson is in the lineup, number 31, the punter. This will be the first punt for him in the game. Danny Stallings is back. Along with Bob Knight. Wobbly kick coming down. Fair catch call for by Knight. And in all that traffic, he makes the catch at the 12-yard line where Ole Miss will take over. Right. Jumbler will be the quarterback in this series again. Time out here at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Pardon me, but you own a Chevy Nova. Is that right? Should we change it for 1971? Many Chevy Nova owners have told us, don't change it. We like it just the way it is. Very dependable, not too big and not too small. So in the case of Nova, we changed our attitude about making yearly changes and kept it the way it was. The people who prefer Nova because it's not too small like its long 111-inch wheelbase, the seating for five adults, the big roomy trunk with steel cargo guard. Other Nova owners who like it because it's not too big like Nova's trim size that's easy to garage, the engines that make a gallon of gas go a long way, the low maintenance costs, and the price that's not too big. 71 Nova, a not too big, not too small car with not much change, just a few nice improvements so it stays just the way you like it. Not too big and not too small. Archie Manning on the sidelines, but not apparently hurt. Just taking a breather. After all, it's been a month since he's been in action. Here is Chumbler, the quarterback, and he gets up to the 17-yard line. So we're glad to know that Archie's okay. And Bruce Kennard wisely alternating quarterbacks, as you've seen LSU do it. Every once in a while, a coach will want his uh, quarterback, his first-team quarterback, on the sideline. Have a look at this defense. Maybe they're doing something from a zone or a man-to-man -man that he just wants them to look at without any pressure. Here's Chumbler throwing to the sideline. He has stuttered out of bounds at the 27. That'll give Ole Miss a first down, trailing 14 to 10. In case you joined us a little bit late, Mississippi... Went out in front seven to nothing. Then it was tied seven to seven. Then Ole Miss got a field goal to make it ten to seven. Then LSU came right back with a 46-yard touchdown pass to Hamilton from Buddy Lee, and it's 14 to 10. LSU in front. Ole Miss with the ball. Bobby Knight, junior from Crystal Springs, Mississippi, the leading scorer on the team, getting it up to about the 31-yard line. Buddy Milliken making the stop. It's kind of interesting uh, not only does LSU have a real strong defensive first string but also on the second string there is Archie Mann a good look at the protective covering on his left arm stuttered in motion marker is down that was almost intercepted 
Mike Doyle, number 91, almost was away, but there was a marker down at the line of scrimmage. You might uh, get a chance to show you what the break was in Manning's arm. A rather unusual surgical technique was used to mend it. Procedure penalty. Well, obviously, what they're discussing here is do you want the penalty or do you want the down? declined so brings up the third down at the 31 yard line third and six LSU 14 Ole Miss 10 we have exactly six minutes to go in the first half Chumler the quarterback check that it's Manning back in Archie to his right rolls a long one he's got stuttered down there it is intercepted by Casanova Casanova is out of bounds at the 46-yard line. A two-on-one coverage. And Casanova stepped right in front. Of Stuttered, and it's now in Mississippi territory, but there's a marker down. There it is. After the fact. Brings it down to the 41 yard line in Ole Miss territory. So the Rebels were guilty of a personal foul. So the incompletion return went for about 12. The penalty of 15 gives him 27 on that return. And now LSU in good position off the 40 of Ole Miss. And that's the fourth turnover for Ole Miss. Three for LSU. Buddy Lee hands to Arthur Cantrell. Horn and Brister bring him back. Over the years, the Southeastern Conference has had many great players, coaches, and teams. It's also had outstanding administrators. The NCAA salutes Conference Commissioner Todd O'Coleman and his information assistant, Scoop Hudgens, and thanks them for their many contributions to college athletics. And we're glad to have Scoop with us as our chief statistician tonight here on ABC. Second down. Dan Bell gets two or three. Bill Van Devender. Linebacker brings him down. He's the monster man, actually. So a third down and three situation for LSU. Allen coming in for Torgerson. Defensive tackle change. So with third down and three, the ball is on the 34-yard line of Ole Miss. LSU with 4.50 to go, leading 14 to 10. We're still in the first half. Incomplete. Andy Hamilton couldn't hold it. He just wanted to be certain he was going to pick up the first down, and he threw it just, uh, well, as you, as you saw, low, but I think what he was trying to do is be absolutely certain of no interception since it was down and out to the right. That means he had to throw the ball 20 or 25 yards in the air. He wanted to keep it low and hard, but a little too low. Wayne Dickinson, the punter of LSU. High kick angling over to the left side and will go out of bounds in the vicinity of the 21 yard line. You'll notice that there was no there were no safety men back. They didn't uh, think that LSU would kick. And this is a great play as we look at some of the scores that happened today. 28 to 17 Tennessee over UCLA and of course Texas 42 Arkansas 7. But uh, a fair catch, you're not going to fair catch inside the seven or eight yard line, so let him kick it wherever he wants to, but don't fool us with a pass. Archie Manning at quarterback with first and 10 for Ole Miss. A little too low for Jim Poole to handle. Well, all the followers of Tennessee were very delighted with that comeback victory 
today over UCLA in a stirring victory for the balls who incidentally will meet Air Force in the Sugar Bowl game to be telecast over ABC on New Year's Day. Four minutes, 29 seconds to go in the first half. The ball is on the 19-yard line. Ole Miss is trailing 14 to 10. Manning is the quarterback. He has Knight stuttered and Reed in the backfield with it. Archie throws again a little bit too low. This time for Baron Stutter. It was the same play only to different men because he did miss him the first time. He knew he was open. So he came right back with the play. Now I'm just wondering, Bill, and trying to observe uh, whether or not that arm, as he swings around to his left, he's got to throw over that arm. And I'm just wondering if it could be kind of a mental thing, perhaps, with him. Third down, 10. Well, you saw Manning make a great move that only veterans can make. He just faked that short pump because he saw one man between him and his intended receiver. And of course, that forced the commitment, and then he just lobbed it over his head. It didn't turn out for much, but it could have been an interception to a less experienced quarterback. So Manning to pool. Puts it out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. And LSU defense getting mighty sticky here as they've held Ole Miss. Bill Young back to punt. Casanova back along with Burns. Casanova takes it to 39 for LSU. Look at him go at the 35 of Ole Miss. One man there. He can't get it. It's all the way. Casanova, an all-SEC defensive back, raced 61 yards, and LSU has gone ahead 20 to 10. All right, now let's watch it here going down the left sideline, and believe me, this, uh, this was formed almost immediately. Now he encounters his only problem on the run, and he evades him nicely by cutting out to the sideline. Nice inside and then outside maneuver. Bill Young, the punter, was the last man, and he couldn't get to him. And here's the kick by Mark Lumpkin. And the Fighting Tigers of LSU have gone ahead of Ole Miss 21 to 10. Three minutes and 58 seconds to go in the first half and the Fighting Tigers of LSU who found themselves trailing at one time by the score of seven to nothing and it looked like it was Mississippi that had the momentum now has come roaring back and now the Fighting Tigers hold an 11 point edge over their arch rivals from Oxford. Well the odd thing about that is when the ball was in the air there was a mix up as to who was going to catch it. Casanova looked at the other man the other man looked at him and then suddenly at the last minute Casanova says, I better take it. And boy, take it, he did. Because believe me, that pocket was formed on that far side almost immediately. It looked to me like maybe the mix-up that they had, they had, maybe Ole Miss went for the wrong guy. Jay Michelson will kick off number 81 for LSU in place of Lumpkin. Bob Knight waits for it, takes it at the 10. To the 20, to the 27-yard line. So at three minutes and 50 seconds to go in the first half, Mississippi trailing LSU 21 to 10. Well, that defense has been something in this second quarter by the Fighting Tigers. I think Tulane was the first team to score on the ground against LSU this year. Even mighty Notre Dame had to settle for a three to nothing win. And Manning in a foot race goes out of bounds. Well, we might remind our listeners as we look at Manning number 18 there, we might remind our listeners that it was last year that Ole Miss was two touchdowns behind and came back and won. And here was the guy who led him to uh, 
this upset last year. Now you'll notice how nice that was to where this guy wasn't going to really give him a good shot, but he was catching over some wires. Casanova. Three minutes and 43 seconds to go on the first half. Second down and about eight. Manny is down, and for the first time, he's really at the bottom of a heap. But I assure you, in case you're wondering about that protective device, there's no way he can hurt that arm. It's completely locked from turning. He broke the radius bone, which governs the turning of your wrist and your arm. And that's uh, that's governed. That's kind of locked in there with a grip around his thumb. And don't you like to see someone pick him up after they do hit him like this? Because it's a recognition of talent. And there you see the break there. It's just right above the left wrist. And the break is on top, and the steel plate is right on top. Three minutes to go in the first half. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. Here is Manning being chased. Goes to the sideline, and he has his man out of bounds as Randy Reed. Let's take a look at that, uh, if we can, just once again, because there's that special compression plate that will help the bone heal. There it is, and it's actually held in there by four screws. Now, that plate compresses both ends of the broken bone together, thus creating a smaller gap or crack in the bone, and it will speed the mending process. Now, that plate will remain in the arm for about a year before being removed. What the? Wobbly kick and short goes out of bounds. And they mark it about the 48-yard line. So LSU, with two minutes and 42 seconds to go in the first half, will take over the ball in Mississippi territory at the 48-yard line and leading 21 to 10. The offense goes in with Buddy Lee, number 18 is the quarterback, Andy Hamilton will be the split back, number 80, Jim Benglis, the fullback, and Arthur Cantrell, number 24, will be the tailback. Up on the right side is the tight end is Jay Michelson. Cantrell gets three to the 45-yard line, Elmer Allen making the stop. It's terribly important now that the defense of Ole Miss just arch their back a little bit because if they go into halftime, say with a three being behind three touchdown, this is going to be awful tough. Uh, so this, to me, right now is the key with two minutes and 15 seconds to go here in the half. Ole Miss's defense has got to hold LSU, or perhaps this could be a troublesome night. In the past 12 years, five Southeastern Conference titles and two national championships have revolved around this game. Here's the pitch back on the end around. The There's the block that they need. And Coffey gets to the 50, goes out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Two stunning blocks by number 76, Mike Wright, and number 62, Mike Damari. That could have gone for a much longer game, but the reaction of the defensive secondary of Ole Miss came up and uh, stopped what looked like was forming uh, very nicely. And that block by Wright, as you saw, it gets him in an ideal position to be cut down. And coming to the sidelines is senior quarterback Buddy Lee from Zachary, Louisiana, who has passed for a touchdown tonight, his counterpart. And running mate, colleague, Burt Jones has passed for a touchdown. And Tommy Casanova has given the defense something to puff its chest out about with a 61-yard punt return. All right, here we go on the deep reverse. Now watch this block coming up by right. See, he's just got a beautiful angle on it here, but now he's hemmed in along the sideline. With a little delay there, and number 45 comes up and makes a tackle. Armstrong. One minute, 54 seconds to go. First half from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The first time a game has ever been televised at night here in Tiger Stadium. We hope you're enjoying it. With LSU out in front, 21 to 10. Everybody lay the throw. And Elmer Wright, Elmer Allen has him down at about the 48-yard line. Great defense by Ole Miss here in the closing moments of the first half. And John, you certainly called it correctly. 
I'm sure there was just a little bit of added something there to keep LSU from getting down there to score again. It brings up a fourth down. Dickinson is back in punt formation for the Tigers. He spirals a long high kick. Goes into the end zone before a Tiger can down it. And a marker is down at the 15 yard line. A marker has been thrown by an official. A clipping signal is the first note. And if so, it'll be half the distance to the goal line, which will put Mississippi indeed in rather deep trouble. With a minute and 13 seconds to go, instead of having it on the 20, it'll be half the distance from the spot of the foul, lose about the seven yard line. Full second. Now it'll be interesting too, Bill, as we watch the signal here, clipping on the part of Ole Miss. Whether or not Ole Miss now decides to, you know, go 93 yards for a touchdown, or will they be willing with 113 left to settle for this 11-point uh, difference? Archie Manning almost in his end zone. Looking, he is in his end zone. Safety. Two points for LSU, and this gives the Tigers a particular amount of joy to get Archie Manning in his own end zone. They've never done it before. All right, now let's take a look at it. He'll swing out here to the left. He was trying to pick his end on a down and out play, a very safe type of pass because he's got a choice of throwing it away or hitting his receiver. He is covered. Now he wants to circle around and come back. And he grabs hold of his shirt right there, as you saw, and that was no contest once he got a hold of him. Ron Este, number 78, defensive tackle, was the man that gets credit for the safety. Not only does Mississippi give up two points, but they also give up the football with 65 seconds to go in the first half. They get a free kick from the 20-yard line, so it's a particularly punishing type of score against them. And as I mentioned, there's a certain amount of pride that comes into it because LSU has led the nation, as you know, this last year and leading again this year in rushing defense. And... Um, to catch Archie back there, of course, really delights them. In addition to the two points, they'll get the football. Al Coffey now is wearing number eight rather than number three. His jersey apparently was torn, so that change has been made. And here's the boot, and it's angling to Casanova. Casanova dropped on the 34-yard line by Ernie Brown. So LSU has another opportunity to put up scores with 58 seconds to go in this first half. You can bet they're going to try to get as much as they possibly can. And did all of you know that you can put a ball in play after a safety three different ways? Place kick, uh, a punt, or which other one? A drop kick. Immediately following our telecast of the Mississippi LSU game, we'll bring you up to date on all the scores and highlights of today's games on College Football Scoreboard. First and ten for LSU. Jim Benglis on the slant. Picks up a couple. 50 seconds to go in the first half. And Mississippi trailing LSU 23 to 10. Well, we've had uh, just about every way to score in this game. The only thing we haven't seen is a two-point conversion. A safety. We've had a field goal. 25 seconds to go. First half. Here's Cantrell driving hard to the 45. And Jeff Horn brings him down for Mississippi after picking up a first down. So it means that LSU will have the football here as time runs out in the first half. Clock moving, 14 seconds to go. They'll give him those short runs as long as he doesn't burst through and go all the way. But the uh, defenders of Ole Miss are backing up, expecting possibly a pass. And wait till you hear this roar when the first half ends. Listen to this. time of entertainment is coming up and the score here at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana is LSU 23, Ole Miss 10. We return now to our studios for this message.
Today's Cant has a great new taste, a mild taste no other cigarette can equal, because the exclusive Micronite filter smooths the smoke, lets all the taste come through. What a good time for a kid. King size or one hundredths? In Sweden, scientists are conducting an experiment. Swedish women go to work and their husbands stay home. In his new role, the male appeared slightly upset, experienced aching muscles, headache, and butterfly stomach. At the end of the day, the female offered him Alka-Seltzer, knowing it would help relieve his headache with its pain and tension, settle his nervous stomach, and enable him to face the brave new world. Harry Reasoner joins the ABC Evening News with Howard K. Smith this Monday. In Sweden, scientists are conducting an experiment. Swedish women go to work and their husbands stay home. In his new role, the male appeared slightly upset, experienced aching muscles, headache, and butterfly stomach. At the end of the day, the female offered him Alka-Seltzer, knowing it would help relieve his headache with its pain and tension, settle his nervous stomach, and enable him to face the brave new world. Harry Reasoner joins the ABC Evening News with Howard K. Smith this Monday. coming out of the field with the theme at halftime with its 200 members songs of the sea shows the marching pageant based on sea songs will feature both precision drill and formation pageantry while the band is forming in concert formation let me mention to you that only one other school in the south has produced more Rhodes scholars than Ole Miss in addition to teaching duties, Old Miss faculty members conduct a wide range of research programs designed to aid citizens throughout the South. 
Ole Miss researchers are seeking ways to stop man's pollution of his environment and the answer to why normal cells become cancerous. Service units and bureaus in every academic division make available the resources of the university to business and industry throughout the region. Under the leadership of Chancellor Porter L. Fortune, Jr., Ole Miss enters its 12th decade of educational service to the South and to the nation. formation of a huge boat. This is from the Flying Dutchman by Wagner. And you'll see the sails actually move. Some of you will get a real kick out of it, I'm sure. The Majorettes will dance to that old favorite, By the Sea. guesses as to what the band forms on the field now. See how well you can tell what this formation is. Perhaps the music will actually give you a hint. big muscles and he smokes a big pipe and his sweetheart is named olive oil ride <laughs> Popeye the sailor man
That's a can of spinach, by the way. There go his bulging muscles. Incidentally, both bands of Mississippi and LSU are having their halftime shows filmed tonight and will take part in Chevrolet's College All-America TV Band Contest. And the winner at the end of this regular season, and this, of course, is the concluding game tonight, will be announced, and that band will be taken all expenses paid to the East-West Shrine game, which you will see televised on ABC on January the 2nd from Oakland, California. So we'll all be awaiting the results of that competition. Great halftime show by the Ole Miss Band of the South under the direction of Dr. James S. Ferguson. Well, later this month, 33 college football players will be announced as winners of NCAA postgraduate scholarships. They're the first of 80 that will be awarded to outstanding student athletes this academic year. Since the NCAA postgraduate scholarship program began in 1964, a total of 318 athletes in all sports have received these $1,000 grants to help further their education. Their areas of postgraduate study have covered a wide range from aeronautics to zoology. In the more popular fields, 68 winners have chosen medicine, 63 law, 35 business administration, 31 engineering, 17 physics, and 16 mathematics. To be considered for an NCAA postgraduate scholarship, a candidate must have at least a B average for three years of college study and must have performed with distinction in his varsity sport. It takes an impressive young man to qualify, but even more impressively, the list of qualifiers is long. Now the Louisiana State University's Golden Band from Tigerland with drum major Carl Couton, the Tigerettes, and of course, the Golden Girls. The Mississippi LSU game is being brought to you live and in color by Continental Insurance, the company that stands behind you at everything you own. By America's Railroads. Who needs them? You do. We all do. And by Chevrolet. See the 71 Chevys at your dealer now because Chevy's back. The band will play for its first number, the finale from the New World Symphony by Dvorak. symphony from the new world will remind you that Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge began its second century this year with an enrollment of nearly 19,000 and is the largest of the eight campuses in the university system. Four years ago, LSU was one of the first universities awarded a Centers of Excellence grant by the National Science Foundation. Today, this land-grant institution is aiming to become a C-grant university as well with a vigorous program in its center for wetland resources. From nuclear science to dairy science, from liberal arts to law, LSU offers a wide variety of quality undergraduate, graduate, and professional courses and extends its many resources to every corner of the globe. Louisiana State University, instructing, searching, and sharing in this new world.
As you know, the Christmas season is rapidly approaching, and so for the remainder of the halftime show, the LSU Tiger Band will bring in the season with some of the familiar Christmas carols. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, one of the songs, and then Carol of the Bells. And uh, throughout this, you'll see bells formed on the gridiron, also a Christmas tree. And in general, simply a, a way of LSU's band to say Merry Christmas to all of you at home. So let's watch and listen. LSU being formed by the band on the gridiron, and we wish you a Merry Christmas being played in the background. Well, 1972 sounds a long way from today, but not for the thousands of young American athletes, men and women, who are now working and training to realize a lifetime dream, membership on a 1972 Olympic team. 
you can be a part of this national endeavor and help send our top Olympians to the 1972 Summer Games in Munich, Germany. Here's how you can do it. Send $5 as your contribution. $5 to U.S. Olympic Committee, Box BA, 57 Park Avenue, New York, New York, and the zip code on that is 10016. In return, you'll receive a colorful Olympic embroidered cloth emblem for your jacket or your cap. So be proud. Be a part of America's Olympic effort. ABC Sports will be in Munich for these summer games to televise all the color and pageantry of the exciting spectacle. And we sincerely hope you'll be able to see these great athletes to whom you're sending your support. Well, you got some friends here, Johns, from Delta to Delta. Halftime and music are over. Coming up next, the second half, and the score here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. LSU 23, Ole Miss 10. The Folster family introduces Chevy's new little car, Vega. Actually, Vega is a family in itself. This is the standard sedan. It comes with bucket seats, front disc brakes, and a highly responsive 140 cubic inch overhead cam engine. The hatchback coupe, a very sporty little car, but also very practical. The whole back end opens up and the back seat folds down. You'll love it. This is the Vega Camback. It's a wagon and then some. Our fourth and final little car is actually a little truck. Vega, the little car that does everything well. Go see it, uh, them, at your Chevrolet dealers. Bill climbing along with Johnny Lujak back at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana for the final 30 minutes of college football in the regular season of 1970. And right now, LSU is leading Mississippi by 13 points. The Tigers will kick off. Michelson will kick off. And it goes to Stutter. Comes back, cutting away from the interference and to the right side, and it's all Tigers there to greet him at the 19-yard line. All right, there you see the first test, uh, 13 to 5 in first downs, but the big thing is total offense, 264 against 71 for Ole Miss. And look at the difference in passing, 196 to 80. First and 10 for Ole Miss. Archie Manning as quarterback with a protective sleeve on his left arm. Manning throws, hits his man, it's Franks. He spun around. Tommy Casanova wouldn't let loose of him. And a whirling dervish goes down at the 17 or 18 yard line. His forward progress, of course, was up to about 16, or the 21 of it. So it's a gain of two on the play. And so that first play of the second half makes it second down. At about eight. In the first half, Manning completed nine out of 25 and two interceptions and one touchdown. Second down at eight, Manning fires it a little low. It's caught by Buddy Jones, number 84. And again, that fellow Casanova, number 37, an all SEC defensive back, who incidentally has scored a touchdown today on a 61 yard dazzling punt return. Well, I'm just wondering whether or not the two-week layoff uh, made him a little bit rusty, not necessarily in his play calling or, and perhaps not in his passing, but I'm wondering if this affected his legs much, the power and strength that he needs to throw that. Third down, two, big play. Archie gets to the relief man on the left side. Bobby Knight puts his head down and is hit back. I don't believe he got to the point to gain. Mike Anderson, number 45, was the first one who lowered the boom on him. It'll be fourth down. Well, you know, uh, I think it's a good point that you actually throw with your legs and not your arm. As, as many golfers know, you actually play golf with your legs. All right, here is Nicholas the last play, Bill. Do you notice this is his secondary receiver that he was trying to hit? 
and the punt comes down. It's reversed to Casanova. He's hit and hit at the 44-yard line, period. Wimpy Winther making the stop along with Bob Knight. And so at that point, LSU will take over the football, leading 23 to 10 with 12 minutes and 52 seconds to go in the third quarter. We were talking about how leg, how important legs are for passing, and perhaps a tip-off, as you recall, early in the game in the first quarter, he slipped about three different occasions, and I'm just wondering whether or not that could have been the tip-off. Cantrell. Cantrell fumbles the ball. A fumble at the 45-yard line, but apparently covered by LSU. Preston Carpenter was the one who made the defensive stop. He's the end, number 83. LSU has lost the ball three times on fumbles. This was the first time they've recovered their own. Second down, nine, the ball to the 45. Lee on the fake is drilled to the ground by Elmer Allen, number 79. How many times have we seen him do that tonight? A boy from Delhi, Louisiana. Putting the ball back on the 39-yard line. So it makes it third down. Boy, he's some tackle. He's a junior. Kegley comes out to the left side. Buddy Lee to throw, throws it down the sideline. He's got Hamilton there. He's got the ball. And he falls down on the 16-yard line out of bounds. Andy Hamilton, who has already caught one pass for a touchdown, a 46 yard, just caught this one. And his first down on the 16-yard line, a 45-yard pass. Well, boy, that was a dandy, Bill, and there wasn't anything fancy about it. It was just the fly pattern or the up pattern, whatever you want to call it. But the key to this whole thing was that he just got excellent passer protection, and that's the key to good completions and good passing. First down on the 16-yard line for LSU. Buddy Lee hands to Cantrell. Big hole. Goes to the eight. And it's smacked by Elmer Allen on the eight-yard line. What a hole to the left tackle of LSU's line. Cantrell is a fast starting back, too. He was through that opening before anybody really realized he was there. Second down, about two. Eight quick yards. Cantrell gets to about the six. Maybe enough for the first down. Close enough to measure it. Hamilton is a real fine end, as all of you know. But, you know, he's only a junior, and yet he has got the career record for passing yardage, breaking Ken Kavanaugh's record as we watch the measurement here. And they're just a little bit short, a couple of inches and in, indicated by Buddy Lee. But uh, Ken Kavanaugh was an All-American here uh, in the late 30s. And in a span of three years, it only took uh, Andy Hamilton two years uh, to break that. So he's got another year coming up in which he can add to that yardage total. Third down, a couple of inches to go for the Fighting Tigers of LSU, leading 23 to 10 and threatening again. First down as Cantrell gets it inside the five. First and goal to go. Buddy Lee, six out of eight today. One long one to Hamilton for a touchdown. The other touchdown toss was thrown by Burt Jones. Cantrell dives to about the three.
Second down. About three yards to go. Armstrong goes out. Mansoor comes in. Cantrell spun around by Aldrich, Brister, and Allen. His forward progress carried to about the two. You notice the defense down there is just a simple eight or nine man line. They're trying to play in the in the gaps. And perhaps he may have to go wide or at least off the tackles. A little bit wider than where perhaps he's going right now. This battle for the Southeastern Conference Championship at LSU. Undefeated in conference play. Losing twice during the season. Once to AM of Texas and to Notre Dame. And here is Cantrell on a fine defensive play by John Aldrich. Number 72, a senior from Greenwood, Mississippi. And it'll bring up the fourth down, and here comes the field goal kicking team onto the field, Mark Lumpkin. A uh, Mississippi player was hurt on that play. Incidentally, LSU has 11 first downs tonight, and it's only three. Eight minutes, 44 seconds to go in this third quarter, and timeout here is called by Ole Miss. Saturday afternoons in the fall mean colorful college football here at ABC with time out here at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The score, LSU 23, Ole Miss 10. Hi, how are you? Hi. Hello. This is Close Up. This is Close Up. A clear red toothpaste with two whiteners that get teeth whiter than the toothpaste you're probably using. And it contains... Close-up white. Close-up. Close-ups. They look like two strangers on the midnight bus to Albany. Billy, put your arm around your sister. And not your stranglehold. Why do I have to do that for? Because she's the only sister you have and you love her very much. And don't you forget it if you want to keep on living. Now smile. Color pictures in a minute. Twenty-nine ninety-five. The Polaroid Color Pack 2 LAN camera. Why wait? I wish a big thing would come out of woods and eat her. Wick Neely, number 32, defensive right halfback, has been taken out of the lineup for Ole Miss, and Freddie Farmer has replaced him. And now Mark Lumpkin will try a field goal for LSU from the 14-yard line. It's up. It's good, and he has now broken the career mark by of Doug Moreau. Twenty-four yard field goal. He broke the record of twenty by Doug Moreau. Set in 1963 in that span of three years, 63 to 65. So Mark Lumpkin is the best field goal kicker in the history of LSU. Well, 641 NCAA basketball teams are off and running, and they're shooting and rebounding this past week. The goal for many is the NCAA championship tournament coming up next March. The university division finals will be held in Houston, so why not plan to take a trip and take a look at the Astrodome action? Here's the kick. It's 26 to 10. LSU out in front of Ole Miss. Bobby Knight carrying it back to about the 26 yard line. They're going to place it right on the 25. Eight and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Gregory, number 71, goes out at tackle. Worthy McClure, number 73, replaces him for Ole Miss. First and 10, and Archie Manning throws to Stuttered at the 30. Gain of five on the play, and he's dropped immediately by Mike Anderson, number 45, star defensive linebacker. I'm sure you realize that LSU has an Orange Bowl bid in the offing here tonight, as well as the Southeastern Conference Championship. All right, this is a very simple pass pattern. You know, it's just down about five or six yards, breaking out to the sideline. And he almost got by the one guy, almost broke that tackle and got by, but it's about a six yard game. Second and four, stuttered in motion. The blitz was on and Manning got away from that first man. Down he goes at the 23 yard line, flattened there by 
Number 88, Richard Piku. Gets up just a little slower. Very courageous young man. Boy, you just can't help but feel that when he can't bend that left arm and he's lying flat there, it just seems like this has got to expose his whole body to a pretty solid crack. Third down, 12. Long pass by Manning. He's got Franks over there. It was caught on the deflection. But let's see if he caught it out of bounds. I believe he did. Franks was the first man there. Bob Knight was behind him. But it goes as an incompleted pass. All right, here we go. You notice he's down, fakes in, and goes back out. Now, see, the ball should be in the air, and it was just a little bit underthrown. And uh, they almost had the pass completion with the second man coming in. But there again was a little, the timing was just a little bit off, and this could have been not playing for the past two weeks. That's Burns back. Greg Burns, single safety. Here is the punt by Bill Young. Burns takes it at the 40 of LSU. Midfield comes to the sideline. He has a bank of blockers ahead of him. One man to beat. He's got him. Touchdown, LSU. A 37-yard punt and a 60-yard return by Craig Burns, who caught it at the 40, and he did exactly the right thing the way the coaches diagram it on the board. He cut up to the midfield straight ahead, then he broke left because the bank of blockers had formed on the sidelines, and Norsworthy threw the last block to enable him to go all the way, and Mark Lumpkin makes the try for point, and the Fighting Tigers of LSU have gone ahead. They haven't posted the score because there's a marker down on the play. There it is. A punt return by Craig Burns that went 60 yards for the TD. Time out here in Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And the score now, LSU 33, Mississippi 10. What would happen if there were no more railroads? You might not even be able to read about it. Because a lot of newspapers could be no more. Without railroads to move it from the mills, paper wouldn't be so cheap anymore. We'd all read less and write less. It could even mean fewer school books and no ticket tape parades. Paper might be so scarce we could use it for money. America without railroads, we can't afford that. But if railroads are just allowed to do business like any other business, with up-to-date regulations and fair taxation, then they'll always deliver the goods. America's railroads, who needs them? You do, we all do. Jay Michelson will kick off for the Fighting Tigers of LSU, who now lead Mississippi by 23 points. Bob Knight is back, along with Vern Stutter. We're still in the third quarter, and here's the boot. Out of bounds it goes, so they'll have to kick it over again. Six minutes, 37 seconds to go in the third quarter, and this is the kind of game that all of the LSU fans were really hoping they'd see tonight. To see their haunted Tigers come through and defeat their arch rivals from Oxford, Mississippi. Of course, they haven't done that yet, but they have a sizable lead. We talk so much about the LSU defense that I think the offense is kind of underrated because they're really blowing out of there. And uh, these punt returns are turning into something that's very devastating. So the offense is really working out dandy for the LSU team and for their fans.
Studdard at the 10. Comes to the 25. Goes to the 37-yard line. A fine return, and John Staggs, number 11, brought him down. Vern Studdard, who has a brother who plays for Georgia Tech, and there is Archie Manning being attended to on the bench. As you can see, they're not, uh, they're not doing anything to the left arm, but they are uh, discussing things with him. I don't believe he's hurt or anything, but I think his pride is injured a bit. Chumbler is the quarterback. Shook Chumbler is a junior. Bad night, Gary. As you know, Mississippi has already accepted an invitation to play in the Gator Bowl. So they uh, they have a bowl assignment all, all wrapped up. But if LSU did not win tonight or does not win tonight, of course, they'll stay home on New Year's Day. And Arkansas would go to the Orange Bowl to take on Nebraska. So there are a lot of added incentives here in addition to the Southeastern Conference undisputed crown, their first since 1958. Tumbler throwing has Franks. Quick reaction by the defense. John Nagel, number 26. Very close to a first down. It looks like they have no choice but to pass because in the first half against the rush, Mississippi had a minus nine yards. So there you have some idea why LSU is leading the nation in uh, in a pass or rather a defense against the rush. First and 10 on the 47 yard line. Good hole opens up and Bob Knight knifes through it at the 43 yard line. He's dropped by Mike Anderson. 10 quick yards. That'll get him in the plus market in a hurry Bill. Well, they say his knee touch now at the 43 and a half, so he's about a foot and a half short of the first down. Second down. Franks to the right, Stutter to the left. Chumbler takes it outside, ducks into the hole, and gets to the 40. Number 73 there is John Sage making the stop. He is the defensive captain and co-captain of the team along with Buddy Lee who is the offensive captain first down on the 40 Mississippi on the move here in this third quarter with four minutes and 30 seconds to go and LSU out in front 33 to 10 two punt returns totaling 121 yards 161 yards another 60 yards have been devastating Bob Knight again finds that hole and gets about eight Greg Burns making the stop. Mark Davis starting left end comes back in. And Buddy Milliken replacing the two ends in that four man front. The linebackers are Anderson, Cassio, and Piku. Second and two. Should Chumbler. Hit by Johnny Sage, number 73, and driven to the ground at the line of scrimmage. Sage is a senior from Houston, Texas. Coming out of the lineup is Richard Piku, number 88 for LSU, holding his left shoulder. Now Lloyd Fry has replaced him. Third and two. At the 32, Mississippi getting the ball to pool at the 28-yard line. That'll be a first down. I would think, uh, John, that this particular sequence must pay off for the Rebs with three minutes to go in the third quarter to get up there to make it 33-17 uh, or 18, depending on what they do on the extra point. Well, well, certainly with 15 minutes to go, and they're kind of an offense, doesn't put things out of reach at all. Well, any coach says you've got to mix the passing with the running, and they haven't been able to run up until about uh, three first downs ago. First down on the 28-yard line. Chumbler gives the night, slowed up momentarily by Arthur Davis, the defensive right end of a 93. Then Este put the stop on him, 78. No game.
Two minutes and ten seconds to go, third quarter. Chumbler throws it over the head of Vern Studdard. As soon as he threw it, he knew it, Bill. The ball just completely come off and hung up there. He knew it just as soon as he let it go that it wouldn't get there. Over his head by at least two or three yards. It just took off and flew on. Things a little gloomy on the Ole Miss side. LSU has stunned the rep after Mississippi went out to a seven to nothing lead. Since that point, they've scored only three more points, while LSU has scored 33. Stuttered, getting it almost to the 18-yard line, which was the point to gain for the first down. Vern Stuttered, who is a senior from Columbus, Mississippi. About a foot short of the first down. They seem the, uh, to be flooding the right side a little bit. The end will go down and out real short, maybe five or six yards, and then they'll sneak a man uh, a little bit late. Now, before he's been covered, and they've been able to hit the short man. Blanks at the top of your screen. Fourth down, the pitch back. Goes to Porter, turns it. Boy, that was a very important play for Ole Miss. Jimmy Porter, a sophomore from Laurel, Mississippi, Knew he had to get that afterburner going because he had to be up there to the line. It was a fourth down situation, and he got it to the 13. That was one of those head him off at the pass. First down for Ole Miss. Bobby Knight grinds it in there. Ronnie Este making the stop at about the eight yard line. Maybe he got down as far as the seven. That's where they're going to place it on the six and a half yard line. Well, this is so important for him to make it on this one because with about 40 seconds to go, if they do score, they, they will be a little bit more than two touchdowns apart. But nevertheless, you've got to score when you've got the momentum going. Second down, four. Stacked up on the five-yard line. Bobby Knight hit by Cassio. This drive started way back on the 29-yard line, so Ole Miss has controlled the football for a good share of time. We have 26 seconds to go in the third quarter. And the ball is put down on the three offside against LSU half the distance to the goal line. Well, that makes it a little bit easier, and those yards are kind of tough down there, so there's a couple of big ones that they got by virtue of penalty. It makes it second down, about a foot, 26 seconds to go, third quarter. Ole Miss trails by 23 points. Judd Kembler, touchdown. He got in behind the wedge. Wimpy Winther, Skip Jernigan, and Billy Coker just wedged forward in the center of the line, and Ole Miss has scored to make it 33-16. Jim Poole back to try for the point. It's good. And it's 33 to 17. Each week throughout the fall, watch ABC for college football. Time off the score. LSU 33, Ole Miss 17. Continental Insurance Claim Report number 31451. Adjuster on scene, T. Duke. Assignment? to salvage 1,700 cases of frozen pies from overturned refrigeration truck. Action taken, immediate utilization of only available local labor. Background, at approximately 1.30 a.m. on September 23rd, the insured, Chef Pierre, Inc., reported accident to Continental's emergency dial claim service. Local adjuster assigned a case began all-night search for substitute refrigeration truck. Time required, five hours. Adjuster then arranged for volunteer work crew from nearby institution. Time required, two hours. Back in the van. Final disposition, approximately 80% of cargo salvaged. 
remainder either damaged in original accident or given as payment to work crew. Well, the Rebs have done it. They moved down the field 71 yards for the score. And here is the kickoff going over to Jimmy Ledoux. Fakes the handoff. Comes to the 22-yard line and is ridden to the ground. John Chandler, number 58, making the stop, along with Mike Bagwell, number 90. There you can see the scoreboard here, superimposed with 12 seconds to go in the third quarter. Buddy Lee, the quarterback. First and ten. Cantrell up to about the 25-yard line before he's knocked down by Dennis Coleman. So the period will run out here. And that does it. The Claxon sounds at the end of the third quarter here at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The score, MSU 33, Ole Miss 17. The changes in the new car you buy today must be meaningful and important. They must be like the changes you'll find in the 1971 Chevrolet Impala. Changes that we feel make it the most car of its kind your dollar can buy. For example, you want it more quiet, so the Impala now has a double layer of steel in the roof, with the inner panel perforated much like acoustical tile to absorb sound. There's a brand new power ventilation system that keeps air moving even when your car isn't. You wanted a smoother ride. The Impala now has a longer wheelbase. There's a bigger windshield, so the whole road opens up in front of you. And for better stopping, you now get powered disc brakes at no extra cost. The 1971 Chevrolet Impala changed top to bottom, front to back, for only one reason, to put you first. You've changed, we've changed. Gene Kelly hosts The Changing Scene Wednesday night on ABC. All set to go with the final 15 minutes. LSU with the ball, second and five. Buddy Lee catches Cantrell. He's down on the 34-yard line, hit by Fred Brister. First down. Well, if that last series was an important one, that long sequence that carried Mississippi down, this one's certainly important to LSU. All right, this was a simple one. You see him sneaking out of the backfield, the number 24, just a little 10-yard pass, and he's wide open, a little bit low, but nevertheless, he wanted to be sure to get it there. Good enough for a first down. Stop play for a moment here while the referee comes over to talk to the linesman. You know, possession is so important now, Bill, trailing by uh, 16 points. Uh, you've got to get that ball, and now LSU knows this, and uh, possession is so important. There you're looking at the statistics right now, 15 first downs to nine. Look at the offensive plays, about even. Yards passing, 241 to 113. Rushing, you see, 
So definitely LSU on total yardage is way ahead of Ole Miss. Well, they're having a problem with the electric clock. That's the reason time has been uh, momentarily called. The clock is, uh, is being counted down now during this time to get it to the proper amount. Apparently, somebody goofed. I played in a football game, Bill, in which we played a third quarter up in Michigan that lasted for 23 minutes. So finally somebody said, uh, hey, uh, that thing isn't right. So then they got together, the two coaches, and they decided that about 11 minute fourth quarter would be very apropos. So since that time, the field clock has never been the official clock. I remember the ball game. There you see all the fans from LSU whooping it up. They can hang on here for the next 14 minutes and three seconds. They'll have won the Southeastern Conference Championship and it on their way to the Orange Bowl. We hope you'll agree that the new decade of college football got off to an exciting start. It's been a season of stars and of upsets and of stunning action. For a last look at many of the highlights, we invite you to stay tuned to College Football 1970 tomorrow. An hour-long review. That'll be at noon Eastern time and 11 o'clock Central time. Oh, I guess they've got the clock in shape. And we're set to go. And there's Dixie being played on the far side by the Red Band, hoping to spur their Mississippi Warriors on. We're back to football. First and ten on the 34-yard line for LSU. Buddy Lee getting the big rush throws. Incomplete. Jay Michelson was the intended receiver. Another one of our regional games tonight. Houston over Miami of Florida, 30 to 3 at the end of three quarters of play. And in the fourth quarter. Tulsa in another of our regional games leading North Texas State. 13.57 to go in the ball game. LSU is leading Mississippi 33 to 17. Second down. Buddy Lee goes to the side and is up to the 46 yard line. First down for LSU. I'm surprised, Bill, that they're attempting to throw that ball because, uh, like I said, possession is so important. And, of course, this is your great time consumer. I guess perhaps what they're thinking about is, well, if I can move it on the, uh, in the air as well as on the ground, fine. But this is surprising me a little bit because Charlie McClendon normally likes a ball control type of game. And with uh, his lead of 16 points, uh, certainly he doesn't want to put it up for grabs and have him run it back for a touchdown. <laughs> Cantrell rifles himself right through the middle of the line. He's being chased down to the 10 all the way. Art Cantrell shot through that opening, and before anybody could react, he went 55 yards for a score. Well, we commented many times tonight about the quick starting ability of Art Cantrell, a junior from La Rose, Louisiana, and there it really paid off for him. He did fumble a couple of times early, and they were costly fumbles, but he more than made up for it with that particular run. There is the attempt. It's not good. There's a marker down, however. Marker on the play. Looks like LSU is going to get another opportunity. Infraction against the Rebels of Mississippi. Mark Lumpkin. Lions will hold. So they have a chance to make it an even 40 points if this one goes through. point. 
79 yards in four plays. All right, here's the replay on this great run. You notice he gets back there real fast. Time out here at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where the score is LSU 40, Ole Miss 17. Data phone data sets enable computers to talk to each other over regular telephone lines. Now the Bell System has a new data phone service that will save a lot of businesses a lot of money. The data phone 113A is an economy model that costs about half as much as the model that preceded it, under $12 a month. This new model is very basic, but most of the business community only need a very basic set, one where they can call the computer and the computer can answer back. That means it's ideal for the thousands of businesses that share time on a computer, since all they really need is a basic data phone. Putting it simply, this new phone service is going to fit the needs of a large percentage of the business community and save those companies a lot of money at the same time. The American Telephone and Telegraph Company and your local Bell Company keep looking for new ways to help your business, this time by letting you talk to your computer at a much lower price. Vern Studdard and Bob Knight getting ready to receive the kickoff with 13-18 to go. Jay Michelson kicks it down the center. A line drive picked up by Porter. And he smacks into the defender at the 35-yard line, Mike Doyle. Well, we've got a very nice wire here from a fan in Birmingham, Alabama. And it says simply, congratulations for a nice game, whoever the winner is. He signed an Alabama fan, a true fan, I might add, John. Let's pause now five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. First and ten for Ole Miss. Shook Chumbler, the quarterback. And off the pullback, Jimmy Porter. And he gets a couple of yards. LSU out in front of Ole Miss, 40 to 17, in a game that has been highlighted by spectacular plays. Except for the first touchdown play, the nine yard one, and the one in which uh, Jumbler sneaked over, everything else has been more than 20 yards. There's been a 20 yard, a 46 yard, a 61 yard. And here is Jumbler throwing deep, too long. There's a marker down, however, at the 34 yard line, and there may be an interference call here. Jim Early was covering Vern Stutter. That's going back over the record here of the LSU Ole Miss series. And in 1950, LSU scored 40 points. And that's the number they have right now in 1917, 52 points. And as you can see, it was interference against the defenders of LSU. Automatic first down for Ole Miss on the 37-yard line. 12 and a half minutes to go. And Shug Chimler, junior quarterback, at the controls. Throws to the sideline. He's got pool there, and he's out of bounds at the 23. Bill Norsworthy knocks him out. Right. Crisscross pattern. The left end went down and in, and the slot back went down and out. And actually, they collided there for a little while, so the defensive wasn't able to pick him up. So he was wide open. Cantrell's last run broke the single-season record of LSU of 892 yards rushing, which was set by Steve Van Buren. And guess how many years ago that was? First down, and it was almost intercepted by Lou Cascio. Number 48, Vern Studdard was the intended receiver. Cascio from Bossier City, Louisiana. A lot of defenders around that ball. He was completely surrounded. Three receivers are out, so he's trying to get maximum passer protection. But still, uh, with all that many defenders back there, this is very difficult. A draw play, a screen, something like this might be a better selection right now. Here's Chumbler back. Incomplete intended for Franks. Allowed to touch the man the minute he gets the ball in his grasp. And Jim Early, number 39, was right on the back of Floyd Franks. So the ball is on the 24-yard line. It's third down, 10 to go. And Ole Miss is trailing 40 to 17. 
Buddy Jones, number 84, has gone back in at wing back for Stuttered, number 84. Chumbler throws a little too low, but bounced up, caught on the rebound by Buddy Jones. to go here those two touchdown returns are uh, making this game look bigger and bigger right now and all season long LSU only had one Brett. Bob Knight in motion and here goes Chumbler to pass on fourth down he throws one he's got his hand it's intercepted Burns has it and he comes back to the 17 still on his feet and now is tugged to the ground at the 21 yard line he had the man deep it was Floyd Franks, I believe, who was in the end zone, but the pass was thrown short. All right, here's the replay from uh, ground level. There you see him going back now. He tries to get it further than he got the ball. I intended to get it, but Craig Burns was there and picked it off. Number 30. Now watch this move. He tries to get away, but then he just grabbed by the shirt. 11 minutes, 52 seconds to go, and Burt Jones... Number seven is the LSU quarterback. He throws a long sideline pass. He's got Coffey there. A couple of defenders, Dennis Coleman and Freddie Farmer. I can't recall a game where they've had more long passes, 50, 60 yard passes. Well, they're not satisfied to sit on this lead of 23 points. They're going for broke. This has been a great series, you know, in the five times that they have been on TV together, LSU has yet to win. So maybe they want to win big to make up for it. Second and ten. And off to Chris Denton. He gets up to about the 28-yard line. Cole Armstrong brings him down. Here's a good chance to watch this hole open up. Off the left side there to the right. Big enough to drive a truck through. Maybe I could go through that hole, Bill. Well, it's similar to the one that Cantrell raced through for the touchdown of 55 yards moments ago. Third and two. Jones, the quarterback, takes it himself, gets the first down, and he's out of bounds. Ten minutes and 59 seconds to go, and LSU leading Ole Miss 40 to 17. He knows what to do with it after he gets it. He was hit pretty hard on a bounce. He skidded about three yards. Marker was down. That's what I thought. It wasn't quite clear from up here, but it is down, and you see him marching and off against LSU. Let's wait for the signal procedure penalty against the Tigers. Ole Miss has substituted John Gilliland and Larry Torgerson as left end and left tackle defensively. Third down, about eight. This is the first time these two teams have ever met at the end of the season. Normally they play on, uh, on Halloween. Chris Stanton almost broke it to the 40-yard line. Ten yards on the play gets up to about the 39-yard line. Stanton was the second leading rusher on the team going into this ball game. He's been averaging close to, well, 3.4-yard average, and he scored six touchdowns. So uh, he's got a wonderful backup man there for Cantrell. <laughs> Jones slips the ball to Denton. How many times as we see uh, today, Jim Bertelson of Texas take that ball from the deep spot on that second handoff, or the uh, second man through on the handoff, and uh, riddle the 
Arkansas defenses with it. A lot of yardage racked up by Texas in that ball game. Bill and I watched it together, and uh, uh, Arkansas just uh, never seemed to uh, become unglued after that first uh, couple of series. Uh, if they had scored, perhaps, and tied the score 14 to 14, it could have been different. Second and five. Bert Jones is back. Throws in the middle. He's got Hamilton there, and there's a marker down. Well, it doesn't make any difference. First down anyway. Incidentally, Ole Miss's passes tonight. 17 out of 38. But three were intercepted. LSU, 10 out of 19. And one was intercepted. There's the signal. Pass interference. There you go. Now let's watch it. See there, the ball was just not quite there yet. And of course, the red-shirted man jumped up in the air. He didn't think to uh, seem to agree with the judge's call. Oh, there's something I didn't see. I, I thought he caught it, John. I didn't see it uh, go loose, so it certainly did make a difference. <laughs> Incomplete to Ken Cavanaugh. Number 49, who gets up rather slowly, is John Gilliland. And he'll be limping off to the far side of the field. Apparently hurt his ankle or his knee. Racing onto the field is Al Coffey, number three, coming in for Kegley for LSU. Second down and ten. Well, it's amazing how much you can see on those replays. Really, I don't know what we did without it. Well, it's timeout called by Mississippi. It all started back in 1869. College football on ABC. The score, LSU 40, Ole Miss 17. Oh, Mom, it hurts. It hurts. Honey, we'll be at the dentist soon. What's wrong, Mrs. Dan? Sam, it won't <clears throat> start. Billy's got a toothache. And Come on, I'll give you a lift. Hurry, Billy. You're a lifesaver, Sam. You, know, you ought to use that, uh, that dry Sunoco. Dry what? Dry Sunoco gasoline. Starts me every time. This winter, fill up with dry Sunoco gasoline. All winter long, your car starts... Like it's summertime. Looks like you got winter beat, Miss Glenn. Learned how from an expert. Fill up with dry Sunoco gasoline and get the bonus of 260 action. The action of the highest octane gasoline at any station. Blended into every gallon from regular on up. Only Sunoco has 260 action. And every gallon is dry. Nine minutes, 41 seconds to go. LSU on the Ole Miss 44-yard line, second and 10. Burt Jones throws the screen pass, complete to Kavanaugh. They seep in behind the screen, however, to bring him down. Elmer Allen, number 79. Number 83 there was Preston Carpenter. All right, let's watch it again. You notice the play develops just a little bit too slowly. He couldn't locate him in a big hurry. And, of course, looking over that way, it just drew an awful lot of folks in the opposite colored jersey. And give credit to Frank McKellar as making the initial stop. So it's third down and about seven to go. Nobody rushing. Spins the ball off to Ledoux who scored the first LSU touchdown tonight. That really gave him a spark, too. And it was that passing combination of Burt Jones to Ledoux that did it, tied the score. LSU has a total of 407 yards in offense, Mississippi 140. But what does not show there is 121 yards in punt returns for two touchdowns. Fourth down, Dickinson. High kick. No chance. And it's batted on on the goal line. So that will be out to the 20. Looked like volleyball for a second, Bill. Well, the LSU fans think, of course, that they touched it before it got into the end zone. 
But the touchback brings the ball out, and Ole Miss now goes to work again with Shug Chumbler as the quarterback. They're bringing it way back here, Bill. Uh, I didn't see the marker way downfield. I still don't see it. But they're bringing the ball and marching off right now. So let's watch the penalty. It's a big one. Still looking for the marker. Never did see it. Personal foul against Ole Miss. So that means the offense will check back out and the defense is called upon again. First down for the Tigers on the 27-yard line of Ole Miss. And the Rebels call timeout here. All in all, the LSU punt returns have totaled 142 yards tonight. 121 went for touchdowns, two of them. Timeout here at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana with the score. LSU 40, Ole Miss 17. What if man had turned out differently? Then where would he wear Levi's Stay Press slacks or Levi's fashion jeans? Would he put Levi's herringbone on his fins? Levi's stripes on his wings? How could he enjoy Levi's flares with Dacron polyester? Dacron polyester? What would he put in the pockets of our State Press bush jeans? What would he do with Levi's hop sack? <laughs> Come to think of it, if man had turned out differently, would there even be a Levi's? There would have been no 1850 gold rush, no man named Levi Strauss, no need for him to invent the world's toughest pair of pants. <laughs> Men, we're glad you walk on two legs. Otherwise, you'd never get the chance to wear a pair of Levi's. Eight minutes, 46 seconds to go. LSU with the ball on the Ole Miss 27-yard line following that costly penalty. And up come the Tigers. Rush. Down he goes at the 38. Carpenter and Coleman, the two ends. Charlie McClendon, the head coach of LSU, is going to welcome this victory in the nine years as we watch the replay of this. This is what we quarterbacks, Bill, always referred to as a sieve passer protection. But Charlie McClendon has only beaten L or, uh, Ole Miss one time in nine years. This will be the second if this score holds up. Yes, and that was way back in 1964, 11-10. What a catch, and what a throw. Little Jimmy Ledoux, who stands only 5'8", who's the smallest man on the field, got behind Farmer and Blunt. And it's a first down on the 13-yard line. Well, John, you saw LSU play Notre Dame. Did they have anything like this, an offensive attack? No, not a bit. In fact, uh, watch, watch this threading the needle right in. It had to go in between two guys. No, they didn't show this kind of uh, offensiveness at all. But defensively, they were awfully strong. First down on the 13, Jones. Into the end zone, it's another score. LSU has 46 points as Kavanaugh, the son of LSU great Ken Kavanaugh, got it for the score. All right, now again, watch this pass play. Number one there, Ladeau. He's got to get the ball just right in between everybody. That is threading the needle. And the try for point by Lumpkin is good. 47 for LSU, 17 for Ole Miss. Well, they'll be celebrating tonight in Baton Rouge, Tiger Stadium, where the score now. The Fighting Tigers, 47, Mississippi, 17.
For some reason, people think all airlines are the same. They're not. Several airlines bought 747s, but TWA built the first 747 terminal. TWA was the first airline to give you private customs and immigration facilities. Most other airlines still share. Only TWA gives you a choice of two movies on every movie flight. At busier airports, we moved our departures to 15 minutes before the hour. So thousands of our passengers beat the crowds every day. For years, the coach passenger has helped pay our bills. We're paying him back with a whole new coach service on TWA ambassador flights. Whether you're flying in the United States or around the world, it pays to spend your money carefully. All airlines are not the same. Seven minutes, 54 seconds to go. The Tigers to kick off the Ole Miss once again. Bob Knight up to the 15. Dropped at the 25. All right, here we go from another angle. Going out to the left. This is Jones. This is the one where he gets it in between the two men. Now just watch this from another angle. Over that man and in front of the other one. Greg Ainsworth is now the tailback for the Rebels. Gets it up to the 33 yard line. Eight yards on the play. Second down about two. Tumbler back to throw. Is it? Tried to get it out to Porter. A lot of the fans there thought he intentionally grounded the ball, but he had a legitimate man looking right at him. He just threw it right down. And there's kind of a dejected Archie Manning right now. And look at his right arm. His right arm has a great big pad on it. That officer is in the way, but we can't uh, quite see it. And apparently, uh, John, uh, his right elbow, Bill, it's wrapped completely around his right elbow. I thought I saw earlier where they were rubbing his right side. I thought maybe it was a knee or something. So now that's a tip off the elbow. Third and three. Jumbler overthrows his mark. Burn stuttered. And it brings up a fourth down. Fourth down. Taken by Casanova. Nobody downfield. One man to stop him. No way you're going to stop him. It's all the way. Casanova has just run another one back for 60 plus yards. And here he comes off the field. 53 to 17 it is just almost unbelievable. I've never seen punt returns that look so simple, just like it was diagrammed on the board. And Lumpkin adds the 54th point. Now, the reason I was a little bit slow to call it a touchdown, it looked like there could have been a clip. Now, let's take a look at it on the uh, on the replay. Here comes Casanova. And he's in full stride right now. You'll notice he's looking around, really, because he's got about four men in front of him. Now, he's trying to slow down, wondering whether or not he should cut back or not. 
Look at that parade he's got in front of him. There's three of them, so he decided to do it on his own and just outsped everybody. So it's 54 to 17, and Michelson will kick off with 6.46 to go. Oh, and the LSU fans are loving every minute of this one. The highest amount of points ever scored in this series between LSU and Mississippi was 52, and LSU won. 52 to 7 back in 1917, but they have surpassed that now and have set a new all time record. Stallings and Ainsworth back to receive the kickoff. Ainsworth at the four. Down he goes at the 20 yard line. Six minutes, 37 seconds to go, and Mississippi trying to get something going here, but all the momentum is in favor of LSU. Everything the Tigers have done has absolutely turned to gold. Chumbler gets to the 37. 17 yards on the play. First down on the 37-yard line. And the fans continue that roar here in Tiger Stadium. Throws to the sideline. Hits Buddy Jones there, and he's out of bounds. On about the 42-yard line. Well, this is a sweet victory for a really great guy, Charlie McLendon. We spent about an hour with him yesterday. He told us about some of the things he planned on doing. I asked him if his team was up. He says, if they're not up after this week, they'll never be up. So certainly uh, for the Southeastern Conference, congratulations, Charlie, your staff, and the entire LSU school. And it's the first one that he's had, the first conference championship. Tumbler stumbled for a moment. That's all that LSU needed. We'd also like to thank head coach Bruiser Kennard, his staff, athletic director Claude Smith, and Billy Gates, the sports information director at, at Mississippi. We'd like to express our appreciation not only to head coach Charlie McClendon and his staff, but also to athletic director Carl Maddox and Bud Johnson, sports information director at LSU, for all their help and cooperation. We've had some fine help in the booth here tonight. Spotter Paul Hilburn of LSU, Rhett Atkinson of Ole Miss, and Scoop Hudgens from the SEC who's done the stats for us. Good opening in the line and breaking through his quarter. He gets to midfield and just inside LSU territory before he skids to his stop. And old Johnny Vaught at Ole Miss in the 24 years he has had six Southeastern Conference championships and 17 bowl games. So Johnny we know you don't feel very good tonight after watching your team and you've got a great ball club Archie Manning certainly courageous and I hope you personally get well soon. And ball carrier Gary Ainsworth gets it to about the 46. There's Charlie McLennan on the sideline. Oh he must be happy. Don't hold your head Charlie. Well it shows that the old age is kind of creeping up. Got a wire here from the fan that said, where did Johnny Lujak play college football? I can't believe it. Jumbler throws deep. Too deep. It's intercepted by Craig Burns. Up the field he comes to the 25. Puts back. Goes to the 40. And is dropped by Gregory at the 42-yard line. That's the fourth interception. And it is now LSU's ball with 427 to go. All right, he lets her fly on a long one. It overshoots. And he 
is really gone. Boy, I'll tell you, once they get it, they're not happy just to fall down and say, look, Coach, I got an interception. He's kind of disappointed, uh, disappointed he didn't go all the way. Well, he went 29 yards with it, and here's Burt Jones being chased on first down. Now he goes at the 29-yard line. Preston Carpenter getting through. Well, for the information of our viewer who sent us the telegram. Yeah, are you going to answer that? Yeah, John Lujak <laughs> was a quarterback at Notre Dame. Now, he wasn't just a quarterback. John Lujak was named as the all-time greatest quarterback in the history of Notre Dame, won the Heisman Trophy, was named a unanimous All-America teams. This goes to show you, John, Three forty-five to go. Dell Walker still going down to the forty-five-yard line in Ole Miss territory. And Archie Manning with pads on both arms now barely hurt his right elbow in the going tonight. Well, that's too bad that a man of his renown. And certainly he is one of the great ones. It's too bad that in his last and final season that he had to sustain that broken arm because this man holds every passing offense record at Ole Miss and they've had some great ones up there starting with Charlie Connerly under Johnny Bott. So certainly to everyone who knows Archie our sympathies to him and he's certainly a courageous performer. Uh, perhaps you notice that the Mississippi players were angered by the fact that some of the fans from LSU have been throwing uh, things onto the uh, turf area and one of the boys was hit with something on his helmet and he angrily turned to the official and said this has got to stop. First and ten on the 45. And he picked up uh, about two yards. Well, at the ABC golf tournament prior to the All-Star game in Chicago, I was playing golf there, and I had this winded guy come up to me from two fairways over, and he says, hey, settle an argument with me. And I said, sure, I'd be happy to. He says, what position did you play at Ohio State? <laughs> Great to be remembered. Second down, about seven. Two minutes and 42 seconds to go. And the Fighting Tigers of LSU are still in there battling with the fighting band of Rebels from Ole Miss. And they just can't wait to get back at each other next year on the home territory of the Rebels. Lock running, 2.15 to go. 54 for LSU, 17 for Ole Miss. Third down and two. Burton Jones gets his first down, fumbles the ball, but it goes out of bounds. So the last player in possession has the ball and stops the clock with 1.56 to go. He gained about an extra five on that fumble. Well, I'm so impressed with the overall team speed of LSU. Like I said, I saw them play against Notre Dame uh, two or three weeks ago, and they just didn't seem to impress me as being uh, this speedy. But I guess when you break in the open, speed gets known quickly. Jones looks deep. 